Hey guys, how you all doing? So, um, today I am doing a video covering the worst things about the BA OLED. Uh, recently, some of you may have seen where I've done a video of the best things about the BA OLED and I thought it's only fair to do the negative side of it. You know, I want to be honest about every product that I've got, you know, um, like every TV, they have their downsides and, you know, I think it's important to highlight anything that I don't think is good. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to say a massive thanks to everyone who subscribed to the channel. Um, we've just hit over 500 subscribers and yeah, really pleased about that. Um, as I said before, as long as you guys enjoy watching these videos, I will keep making them. And uh, you guys seem to enjoy these videos, you know, I get lots of positive feedback, which is great. You know, this is why I do it. And Whilst we're on that subject, if there's anything that you guys would like to see, drop a comment down below. Um, you know, maybe give me a few suggestions of things that you'd like to see in the future, be it with this TV or maybe another product that I might be able to get my hands on. Um, so yeah, once again, a massive thanks to you guys. You know, um, at this rate, you know, next next target's the thousand subscriber. And yeah, I can't believe that we've got to 500 this quick. Really pleased about that. So yeah, thanks again. So. Let's get into this video and let's look at these downsides. So the uh, first dislike I have about this TV is the power cable. As you may have seen with my previous video, the power cable on this TV is only 1.5 meters long. Now I've had the 55 and the 65 inch version and both are exactly the same length. Now, as you can see with my setup, okay, yeah, I know a lot of you guys don't like the way the cable comes down the wall, but that's the way it is. It doesn't give you much room or scope, should I say, to, uh, you know, wall mount it, really. I mean, for such a large TV, you know, a lot of people will be thinking about wall mounting them. And I have had to run an extension lead up to the back of the TV where I plug it in up there. Now, other TVs that I've had in the past um, may have not had overly long leads either, but what they do give you is the option to just simply disconnect it and put another power lead in there, just a sort of, you know, your standard TV, I don't know, figure of eight, I think they call it, power cable. You know, so you can go and buy one off Amazon or something like that for a few pound, um, you know, which is a lot easier to do. And it's a lot of a, a lot cleaner install, especially if you know you are gonna sort of put wires down the back of the wall, you know, hidden away. Um, but what LG have done, they seem to have gone out of their way to just make it awkward. You cannot remove that power cable. They they have made it so it's fixed in there. I mean, I actually spoke to um, guys in one of the shops. Um, I think it was Curry's or John Lewis. And I said to him, you know, what, what about the warranty? If I was to sort of dewire it and put my own one on there, they said, no, avoid the warranty. Even though it has got like a sort of like a multi-plug thing on there, it's not a, a standard sort of fitting I've ever seen. Um, yeah, so it's like they've gone out of their way to try and be awkward about this power cable. Why? I've got no idea. And also, you know, for such an expensive TV, um, you know, it is a considered purchase. You'd think they'd, they'd make it sort of, you know, I'd say five metres long would be fair. You know, what would it cost? I'd rather have them chuck an extra 10, 20 quid on the price and have a decent length cable that you've got not got to go messing around, you know, getting an extension lead and all this sort of malarkey. Um, it, I think it's just absolutely pathetic. You know, I've had iPad Pros that come with longer power cables and that. I mean, that the iPad Pro come with a two metre cable, you know, one and a half metres for a TV. Come on, LG, that's, a, you know, you're having a laugh there. It, that is, was a real bugbear of mine when I took it out of the box. And I'm sure there's people out there who have bought this TV and have then realised that they're going to struggle to warm out it and then maybe not have been able to, you know, get that TV up and running properly that day, which, you know, is a disappointment to people. So, yeah, that is the first downside of this TV. So the next negative thing with this TV is well more of a glitch than anything to be honest now i've not heard really anyone mention this before but if any of you guys use the voice command you may have encountered this yourself and for those who haven't i'll give you a demo of it now 
So what I'm going to do is use the voice command button here. Turn on lounge lights. Okay, turning four lights on. So there we go. Lights have turned on. And we've got the confirmation saying turning four lights on. And yes, okay, the lights are on and waiting. Still waiting. And it ain't gonna go anywhere. That thing just sticks there and will not budge. Don't matter what you do, it will just stick there now. Um, sit there for five minutes, just waiting for it to disappear when it won't, which is a bit daft for a TV that can potentially get screen burn. So the only thing that I found that uh, gets rid of it, well, let me just show you guys. I mean, press the back button. No, that don't work. So you have to press something like the home button, which brings up the menu, and then you have to come back out of that to get rid of it. I mean, what an absolute stupid thing to do. I mean, why LG have not picked up on this? I've got no idea. I've got no idea. Um, it's a risk, like I say, for getting burning, and it's annoyance. Seeing though that that button is to make things easier, you know, give a voice command, it's a bit stupid that at the end of that, then you've got a menu stuck up there, which you then have to do a couple of button presses to get rid of. Um, I know it's not the biggest deal at the end of the day, but it's still an annoyance nonetheless, and it shouldn't be like that, and LG need, really need to get that sorted. So that is the second downside about this TV. On to the third downside of this TV, and whilst we're talking about sort of menus and such like, I just want to talk about the menus and home screen and that. Now, if you've seen my previous video, you'd have heard me say um, one of the things that I love about this um, TV is the interface itself, you know, it looks nice and all that, it's, it's quick. But on the subject of looking nice, what doesn't look so great about, I mean, you know, it's all laid out nicely like this, sort of colourful and whatnot. But the resolution just seems a bit naff, if I'm honest. Now, I don't know how true this is, but I read somewhere that the, or the sort of, you know, menu with the interface and everything is actually was actually done in 1080p and is upscaled to 4K. So it's not a native 4K sort of interface here. And it just doesn't look quite as sharp as it does on other TVs that I've seen. Again, it's not a massive deal, but I just think it, you know, it would give it that bit of polish to the whole system if it was just that bit sharper looking, um, you know, comparing it to a Samsung, you know, on their 4K TVs are all nice and sharp and just, yeah, look the business sort of thing and that, that sort of department. But this, you know, it's just a little bit soft looking for my liking. When, you know, you turn on a 4K um, video or something like that, you know, you can really see the sort of difference in if there's any text on that compared to like what the menus are like. Um, so yeah, something that I think could be improved on Again, not the biggest deal, but still, I think it's a bit of a sort of downside with the TV. So let's uh, move on to the next. So the next negative thing about this TV is the remote. Now, if you watched my last video, I said that um, the remote was actually one of the positive things about this TV. But as much as the interface on it, you know, the the, the buttons all um, laid out nicely. Um, I think it works well. I like these, you know, it's a magic remote, so you get the pointer on the screen and the little scroll thing there. What um, I don't like about it, it's a little bit cheap. I mean, yes, yeah, sort of nice and glossy on the back, but I just think for this sort of price of TV, it could be better. Now, an example of this is, now this one isn't too bad, but on the 55 inch one I had, on the writing on Amazon and Netflix, was just printed all on the wonk. It wasn't even on there straight. It made it look like, you know, like it's a cheap Polaroid TV or something like that. You know, the way it was printed on there, you know, not very good at all. Not what you expect for a TV that when it come out, 
you know, it's probably like three grand or something like that, you know. It's more like a budget TV remote control. So I do think they could have put maybe in a bit more effort with it. You, you know, yeah, it does its job well. But I just think aesthetically, it could look a bit better, to be honest. Again, not a massive deal, but, you know, all these little things just add up and, you know, sort of tarnish what could be, you know, almost a perfect product. So let's move on to the uh, next one. Okie dokie. So next one up is, um, again, not a massive thing, but is potentially a bit of a sort of downside if you're wall mounting it, depending on how, how, let me put my teeth back in. All depending on how high up you are mounting the TV. Now ours, I must be honest, is quite high up. But uh, one thing I noticed with it is underneath here, as you can see, you've got this big step coming in. Now this is for mounting of the uh, tabletop stand. Now, which is fine if you're mounting that, but if you're wall mounting it, you're left with, like I say, that big step, which looks a bit odd. Now other TVs that I've had um, that have that also come with a blanking plate that fills that gap. Now it might seem petty, but now I want to run some hue lights behind this TV and they're going to come all along here obviously on the back of the TV, but now when I get to this bit, I've got to now make them come in on that step, um, which is going to be a bit awkward to do, where if there was a blanking plate, I could just carry them straight along and carry on following the normal sort of straight line profile of the TV. Um, bit of a strange thing. Now, I didn't have one in the box. I presume that they aren't meant to come with one if I didn't have one in the box. Um, Maybe if you guys did let me know, am I missing something? I don't know. But I looked through everything, there was nothing saying about it. So I presume that's just the way you have to leave it. So let's move on to the uh, final thing I don't like about this TV. So the final thing I don't like about this TV. And that is owning one. And the reason why that is, is because you are treated like some sort of social outcast by anyone who owns an LED TV. Uh, mainly QLED owners seem to have this weird sort of fascination with knocking anyone who has an OLED TV. Why this is, I have got no idea. I've never known anything so childish in all my life. It's almost going along the lines of Apple versus Android. I couldn't care less what TV anyone else owns, really. I buy what I like for me. Yet, I have had numerous comments um, on the channel or on other forums knocking me for buying an OLED TV. I mean, what's that about? I mean, like, if I'm happy with it, I'm paying for it. Why are they so bothered? You know, I get, oh, you know, the brightness ain't there or... Screen burn, screen burn, screen burn. That's all I hear all bloody day long. Screen burn this, screen burn that. I'm happy to put up with it. If it gets screen burn, then that's my own fault for buying this TV. And I will take that up with um, LG themselves and the company I bought it from. That's the risk I'm taking. I know that. If, if I'm happy to do that, then why should other people be so bothered about it? Um, I mean, the shocking thing is there's people out there who have actually got YouTube channels that pretty much they seem to be hell-bent on just creating content <coughs> to knock uh, OLED TVs and anyone who buys one, you know, they get real nasty about it. I just, I really don't understand it. If someone wants to go out and buy um, <coughs> a QLED TV, fine, I'm not bothered. You go and buy one. There's no skin off my nose either way what you buy. You know, good for you if you enjoy that TV. Fair play. That's all. It's, that's all it's about. If you are happy with what you're buying, isn't that the main thing? No matter what anyone else thinks or thinks what you should have, or you know what they would buy. At the end of the day, if you're paying for it, and you're buying it, and you're happy with it. 
That's it. That's all that matters is the happiness at the end of it, you know? Whether you get burning or not, if you're happy to have bloody burning, does it matter? So that is one of the downsides of owning an OLED, is the negativity people seem to have about it, um, and that will just continue to try and knock you for you know, buying that sort of technology. And I just think it's really sad that people just can't be happy for other people in their choice of what they buy. And people go to such extents to try and show up what they've bought. Oh, look, you've bought a piece of junk. It will burn in. Look, I can prove it. My, my own, you know, I had an OLED. It burnt out within, you know, a week or whatever. Well, you know, well, tough. At the end of the day, you bought one. You knew the choice. Now you're complaining about it, you know. Me or anyone else is happy to have it. So what's the big deal? Just leave it. You know, some people have got, the, like I say, this massive fascination with just trying to knock anyone who buys something different to what they like. And I just think it's pathetic, quite frankly. So if you're happy to buy one, don't bother about what anyone else thinks. You know, if you're happy, you're happy. That's it. So that's the other downside about having one. You will be a social outcast and some sort of leper if you buy an OLED TV. And there you have it then, guys. Um, hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, maybe think about uh, subscribing to the channel if you'd like to see uh, more of the same in the future. Once again, uh, massive thanks to all you guys who are already subscribed and for supporting the channel. And, you know, really chuffed to hit that 500 subscriber mark. And hopefully, you know, maybe in a few months' time, we're at that 1,000 mark. You never know. So, once again, thanks very much. And catch you guys on the next one. Bye for now.